This is lecture number 46 in the FOA series of lectures on fiber optics. This lecture is our second lecture on do-it-yourself fiber to the home. And in this one we're going to talk about Southern Fiberworks, a company in Cordell, Georgia that did it themselves. FOA gets lots of calls from people asking us about their fiber optic projects. Over a year ago, we got a call from Greg Turton. Greg was a home developer in Cordell, Georgia, a small town of about 11,000, 12,000 people off of Interstate 75, about an hour and a half south of Atlanta. This small town had really terrible internet service, not so great phone service. And Greg knew he was never going to get a major player to come into the town. But as a developer, he knew how to do things. And what he wanted to know was, could he do a fiber to the home system himself? We talked to Greg for a long time, and we came to the conclusion that, yes, indeed, this is the guy who could do it. We explained to Greg what was involved in doing a project and what it takes from someone like himself who wanted to do it. What does it take? Well, <laughs> the first thing is it takes commitment because it's a lot of work and takes a lot of time. You'll need financing. A fiber to the home system can cost anywhere from a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars per subscriber, depending on the geography, how long basically the links are, for each of the subscribers you're connecting. You need to come up with a design, find suppliers, find contractors or train workers to do the work. And you know what you need the most of? You need patience because it's going to take quite a while to do it. Probably more than a year to just get started. We pointed out that the first thing you need to do is to learn everything you can about the project and what others have done in doing similar projects. You need to read articles and call people and attend meetings. And of course, we here at the FOA are happy to talk with you. So that's what Greg did. He found others in the Southeast who had done it. He talked to them and learned from them. And of course, in doing so, he learned from their mistakes. So hopefully, he wouldn't make any of theirs. But of course, we know he's going to make mistakes of his own. We all do that. Like anybody else who's new to fiber, we suggested they take a course from one of our FOA schools so they learn how to talk fiber. Greg and several of his people went up to Atlanta and took a course from Eric Pearson at Pearson Technologies. Eric is one of our master instructors and one person who we can guarantee you if you take a course with you're going to learn a lot about fiber optics. Next thing we talked about with Greg was finding the right-of-way and finding out what was available in the area for fiber connections already. When you build a system like this, you're going to have to lay cable across people's property. You may have to use utility poles that are already in place. So you need to get access to those. If you're going underground, you're also going to end up having to cross bridges or streams. One of the things you'll do is you'll get to know your local government. Well, Greg had a leg up on this, on this project because he was a local contractor. He had built more than 800 homes in the area. So he knew the right people in the local government and he knew the places to go to get permits to do what he needed to do for fiber optic construction. We pointed out to Greg that he was going to need to find suppliers for his cabling and his hardware, his electronics, his internet service, and he was going to have to deal with the issue of customer assistance and decide whether that was going to be done in-house or farmed out also. Greg had a top-notch right-hand man Dave Herlovich, who'd been working for, with him for many years, 
who also attended the fiber optic training courses and was instrumental in helping him keep track of all of the bits and pieces of this project. One of the first things to do, of course, is to design the cable plant. And Greg, who's a bit of a techie, took on this project himself. He used Google Earth to lay out where the cable plant will be built and how he was going to connect up all of the homes in several different sections around Cordell. He also figured out how to connect up to his ISP and to run an extension link to get to his own head end. One of the things we always tell people about designing fiber optic networks is you have to very carefully inspect the route over which you will be installing cable. And one of the things you have to do is to look for underground communications and electrical cables, as well as water, sewer, and gas pipes. There's a number you can call before you dig, 811, toll free, which will give you a connection to someone who knows what cables are in the area. You should always call this before you ever dig. One of the things Greg and his crew learned that they had to learn to locate cables and pipes themselves. So they bought a very high quality underground detection system and learned how to use it. And they used it to double check every route. Part of what they learned as they literally drove and walked the route to inspect it is sometimes the easiest way to install cables was not the obvious. For example, they had to install a cable on this private dirt road. But what they found out very quickly, it was easier to install the cable right down the middle of the road than to do it in the ditches. Greg's home building business didn't require a lot of the heavy equipment he would need to install cables underground, like trenching equipment and directional boring equipment. Rather than buying these, he rents them when he needs them and then sends them back, finding that to be much more cost effective, something that many other people learn when they're doing their fiber optic networks. Since they're in rural areas, they wanted to place their pedestals in accessible locations, but they also ordered markers so they could mark them so other people would know, one, who it belonged to, and two, where their cables ran. Several locations, they needed pedestals with electronics for the remote links. So they had to use fairly large pedestals that also had splice trays. And they had to bring power underground to these pedestals for the electronics. Place their head end in the headquarters for the construction company. Setting aside a room and installing racks of equipment that they needed. These two racks are all the equipment they need for the beginning of their fiber to the home system, covering thousands of subscribers. And note that on the left-hand rack in the bottom are backup batteries, so they have backup power supplies. Like all rural fiber to the home systems, the length of connection to the home from the street where their cables run is quite long. They had to learn new ways to connect up their homeowners so they wouldn't destroy their property. They used a special narrow trenching machine that produced a couple inch wide trench to bury underground cables. And they used directional boring where they did not want to disturb the surface, for example, going underneath driveways. These techniques allowed them to connect up homes without disturbing the property and keeping their customers happy. Here's proof of how well their system works. This is a computer sitting in Greg's own home showing in a speed test 800 megabits per second plus downstream and 600 megabits per second upstream. One of the things to remember is 
that a passive optical network, a BPON network, delivers 2.5 gig downstream and 1.25 gigs upstream. Delivering all that to the customers will make them very, very happy. In this video, we've given you a few of the tips that Southern Fiberworks learned as they were building their project. FOA has recently published a new outside plant construction guide that you'll find invaluable if you want to do your own system. It tells you a lot of the things we've talked about here about outside plant cable construction. And of course you can also go to the FOA guide or FiberU to learn more about installation. Southern Fiberworks is just one of many organizations that are taking matters into their own hands and building their own fiber to the home networks. We'll be profiling a few more of these in a few more videotapes on the FOA YouTube site, so watch for them. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the international nonprofit professional society of fiber optics. If you're doing fiber optics, the FOA is here to help you.